morning and welcome to our video service at Calvary Baptist Church. Thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, this morning and I'm looking forward to all that God has planned for us today. Uh, and so let's go ahead and we'll begin our service uh, with a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your many blessings. Uh, we're thankful that we can come together, we can be challenged from your word. I pray that you'd bless our time together as we worship, uh, worship you in song. And that, God, we do look forward to the time when we can come back together as a church family uh, and fellowship together. But, God, I pray during this time that you'd grant us wisdom uh, as we live our daily lives. We pray for wisdom also for our, our government, our leadership, uh, as they deal with this virus that is going on. Uh, and we do pray also for those uh, who are suffering from this virus by, uh, with sickness. We pray that you just heal them. And then for those who have lost loved ones, God, I pray that you bring comfort that only you can give. And God, will be careful to give you all the praise and glory for all that is done. God, we pray during this time also that uh, the salvation of souls uh, uh, would happen in, like never before as people are questioning uh, and, they're, and they're afraid of, of what's going on. God, may they look to you and may they come to trust you. Bless now our service. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. I would encourage you uh, to listen, uh, but more importantly, I'd, I'd love for you to sing along uh, as my family uh, comes and, and sings a song here this morning. So sing it out uh, with my family, if you would. Are ready? Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing His mercy and His grace In the mansions bright and blessed He'll prepare for us a place When we all get to heaven What a day of rejoicing that will be when we meet it 
Jesus' feet and we worship him in person. I'm looking forward to, to that day, being able to worship uh, with, with you all at my Savior's feet. And I'm looking forward to the day uh, when it'll be just like a little heaven on earth when we can come together uh, and worship our Savior again once more. I have just a couple of announcements for you uh, and to just to kind of keep you of what's uh, up to date and what's going on. Uh, I want to encourage you to continue to pray. Uh, pray for our leadership as we have already done this morning, uh, for our country, for our state, uh, and our local leaders, uh, and pray that God would give them wisdom during these difficult days. I also uh, ask you to pray uh, for the many churches around the world who are uh, broadcasting uh, their services, and people are, are watching uh, services, church services, uh, and they've never watched a service before. Maybe they never even came into a church before, but they're going to watch uh, online. So pray that God would move in the hearts of people and that many would come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. And then thirdly, I also like to ask you to pray. Pray for Christians. Uh, our country, our world is in desperate need of revival. Uh, and it's during uh, times like these where there's a, a fear of the unknown, uh, where people, they draw closer to the Lord. And so be praying for God to do a work in your heart and in your life uh, and renew a right spirit within us and bring revival uh, to our nation. Just uh, one more announcement I have, or two more actually. Uh, one more would be uh, that our services are going to remain closed until after April 30th. Uh, that is, uh, President Trump has suggested that uh, and has stated that uh, places should be closed until April 30th and we'll reevaluate uh, as we get closer to that date. Uh, and then also, I want to encourage you, uh, if you are able, to continue to remain faithful in your giving uh, and worshiping God with your tithe. Uh, and uh, I'm typically up, up at the church here uh, nearly every day, Lord willing, uh, so you can drop your tithe off any time or you can mail it in and we'll make sure that that gets, gets taken care of. I want to thank you so much for your faithfulness through prayer, your faithfulness in giving, and your faithfulness in telling others about Jesus Christ. Well, my family's going to come once again. We're going to sing two more songs, and I would encourage you uh, to sing along with us uh, as we worship our God together today. What a thing we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. Do thy friends 
despise forsake thee. Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. When See you.
hymns to sing, and what a great truth and message it is. Brings great encouragement, uh, uh, even in times like these. As, as, the, as the world around us is, is crazy, we can simply say it as well with my soul, because we know uh, the God that is in charge, we know the God of the universe. I want to ask you, if you would, to take your Bibles today uh, and uh, wherever uh, you may be, maybe you're sitting in your living room on your couch and watching this, or maybe you're sitting at the uh, dining room table, uh, but I would encourage you to follow along with us today, <coughs> excuse me, uh, as we look into uh, the Word of God. If you have your Bibles, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1 uh, and verse number 7. We're going to be finishing uh, our series here on the fear, not having a spirit of fear. Uh, and so I want to draw your attention to 2 Timothy chapter 1 uh, and verse number 7. The Bible tells us, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of sound mind. In recent weeks, we've looked at uh, these different uh, types of spirits. We've looked at this spirit of fear, which we're not to have uh, because of, of who we know, uh, because of who we serve, our great God. And then we looked at uh, the type of spirits that we should have, a spirit of power. We serve an all-powerful God, and we don't have to be afraid of what man can do to us. We don't have to be afraid of what's uh, going out on outside the, the walls of our home because we can live in power because our God is all-powerful and he's promised to never leave us nor forsake us. And then uh, we noticed that last week that we're supposed to have the spirit of love, a spirit of love, and we're to love as Jesus loves, being willing to forgive as Jesus uh, forgave us. Uh, and that what a great challenge that is, to have that spirit of love God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And we are to extend his love to a world that so desperately needs it. Uh, and uh, I'm so thankful for the love of Jesus uh, and the love that he's shown me. Let's show it to a world that needs it. And then this morning, we're gonna be looking at having a spirit of a sound mind, the spirit of a sound mind. Let's pray. Uh, we'll ask the Lord to bless our time together uh, in his word. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we can be challenged from your word today. Thankful that we can, uh, even though we're not meeting together, that we can still communicate uh, by way of video. And God, I pray that you would help us uh, to be a people that have this spirit of a sound mind. Uh, we're not to have a spirit of fear, but because of your power, the spirit of power, uh, your love, or, or us having the spirit of love, we can truly have uh, this spirit of a sound mind. Bless us now as we look into your word. God, encourage us today. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. There are three different uh, uh, kind of words, if you will, that I've uh, that I've kind of not necessarily come up with, but three different challenges for us today. And I want us to notice as we think about having a, uh, a sound mind, I think there are three words that best describe a sound mind. Uh, one would be wisdom. Uh, one obviously would be uh, thinking. Uh, and then also the third word, which is closely related to those two, would be simply our mind. And so we're going to look at uh, those three things today as we are challenged in this area of having a sound mind. Why is it that we don't need to panic today? Uh, it's because we don't have the spirit of fear, but we've got a spirit of power and of love, and we're thinking with a clear, sound mind because we know that today is not the end all. Uh, we know that there is something uh, tomorrow and the next day and next year and uh, the next decade and next century. In fact, we know uh, where we'll be for all of eternity if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. So as we get into this today uh, and discuss this having a sound mind, I want us to notice, if you would, and if you're taking notes, I would encourage you to do so, <clears throat> I want you to notice, first of all, this morning, that as, if, as we have a sound mind, it is important that, number one, we are wise unto salvation. Wise unto salvation. You're already in 2 Timothy Flip over with, with me to 2 Timothy chapter number 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 
Uh, and uh, th this uh, uh, scripture in 2 Timothy chapter 3 has been our theme for the year uh, as uh, we celebrate 75 years of, uh, of this church being uh, uh, in existence. And, and we've uh, challenged the people here to continue, uh, uh, much like Paul challenged Timothy to continue. But this kind of a, has taken a new meaning for us here, uh, and, uh, and this passage, a new meaning for everybody. Uh, as, as we go through these, these times that we're in, uh, where nothing is normal, and God would have us simply just to step back and continue. Don't panic, but continue in what we've learned. Let's look at this. 2 Timothy chapter 3, as we think about being wise unto salvation, look down with me at verse number 14. 2 Timothy 3 verse 14 says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. The holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Hey, where does having a sound mind begin? It begins with salvation. And I wanted to, I, my challenge to you today is, are you wise unto salvation? Paul's writing Timothy here, and he says, man, you, I want you to continue what you've learned, what you've been assured of, knowing of whom you've learned them. But continue thou, he says. Hey, and then he says, hey, you know what? Your mom. Your grandmother, they taught you uh, about Jesus. They taught you about this salvation. And the Holy Scriptures are able to make thee wise unto salvation. And my challenge to you if you're watching today is do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if Jesus were to come back today or if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you would be in heaven for all of eternity? You can know that for sure. Are you wise unto salvation? Uh, turn with me to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. As we consider this thought of being wise unto salvation, uh, the scriptures uh, kind of term it another way, or Jesus describes it another way. In John chapter number 3, he simply says this, and we'll read about it in a moment, but he says, uh, first of all, he says, we must be born again. If we're going to be wise unto salvation, we must be born again. In John chapter 3 and verse 1, the Bible says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with you. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus answered, we're in verse number five now, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water, that's being born physically, and of the Spirit that's trusting Jesus Christ as their Savior, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. He's saying, hey, because you're born uh, physically, guess what? You're going to die physically as well. And, and then he says, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Hey, you must be born again. You must have a time in your life. There must be a time in your life when you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. And, and if you do that, hey, you'll be in, in heaven for all of eternity. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. You see, when you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're guaranteeing your eternal home in heaven. Not because of anything that, that I have done or you have done but because of everything that Jesus has done on the cross of Calvary. Verse number seven says, Marvel not uh, that I said unto thee, you must be born again. And then we read it later on down there, some familiar passages in verse number, or verses, verse number 15, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And that's Jesus' desire for you today. He desires that you become wise unto salvation. He desires the fact that you recognize you're a sinner, recognize the fact that only Jesus can save you, and then trust him for your salvation. Has there been a time in your life where you, where you have accepted Jesus as your Savior? If not, I would encourage you to do that today. You must be born again. You see, my physical birthday is July 4th, 1980. And because I've got a physical birthday one day, and Lord willing, it's after a long life lived, I'm going to pass from this earth. I'm going to die. If you're born, you're going to die. But you know what? In August of 1986, I was born again. I've got now a spiritual birthday where I've trusted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And because of that, I... Uh, will not die spiritually, but rather I will be in heaven for all of eternity. How can I have a sound mind in days that we're living in? It's because this world's not my home. It's because I'm serving a God uh, in heaven, a God that is in charge, a God that is all-powerful, a God that loves me. Uh, and because of those facts, I can have a sound mind today because I know that there's a God in heaven that loves me. I know that there's a God in heaven that is all powerful. He must be born again. You want to experience a sound mind. It starts by being wise unto salvation and being born again. But as we consider being wise unto salvation, uh, our journey on this earth doesn't end uh, at salvation. In fact, uh, God calls us to live for him. You see, not, we must be born again, and then as Christians, we must grow in knowledge. You see, 2 Peter tells us this, and uh, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 18, if you're taking notes, you can uh, look this verse up yourself later. I'll just quote it for you now. But 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 18 tells us, but grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. The challenge for an individual that is born again is to now grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, I was born July 4, 1980. And since that, I have begun to, I, I began to grow and to mature, grow physically but also grow uh, in my mind as well and, uh, and, and, and develop uh, uh, mentally and physically over the years. Spiritually, we must be doing the same thing. We must be growing in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In James chapter 1, if you would like to follow me there, as we consider growing in Jesus Christ, James chapter 1 and verse number five tells us this. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God <clears throat> that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. We must be wise unto salvation by being born again. And then we must be growing in our walk with Jesus Christ. And, and the Bible challenges us here in James chapter one and verse five that we are to ask for wisdom. Ask for knowledge. The Bible also tells us ye have not because ye ask not. And so let's be seeking the Lord's wisdom in every area of our life. Hey, how do we have the sound mind? By being wise unto salvation. Ye must be born again. And then we must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Secondly, this morning, as we consider having the sound mind, we must be wise unto salvation, but also we must think with virtue. We must think with virtue. Follow me over to Philippians, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Uh, and if you would, look with me down uh, at verse number 8. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 8. The Bible tells us, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, 
Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. How do we think with virtue? We're thinking on, on those things that are listed in this passage, those things that are true, honest, just, pure, uh, lovely, and of good report. That's what we're supposed to be thinking of. Here's the problem. The problem is we get so distracted by life. We get so distracted by our circumstances. We get so distracted by uh, the trial that we might be going through. We get distracted by the temptation that presents itself that we don't think with virtue. Instead of looking uh, to the Lord and uh, uh, looking to the things that God would have us look to, we look towards our problems. And that becomes our focus. Think with virtue. Think on those things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and of good report. We could say it this way. Hey, look on the positive side of things. Uh, you know, our tendency is to look at the negative. Man, we, we see uh, things that aren't done. We see things that aren't going well. Man, they could have done this better. They could have done that better. Uh, we look at all of that. But rather, let's look at the positive side of things. Look at the positive side of life. Think with virtue. Thinking with virtue, uh, I believe there, there are three different types of, uh, of thinking that, that go into this. Uh, and I want to share those with you. We challenged you just a moment ago that we're to grow in our walk with Jesus Christ. We're to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. But I want you to notice as we consider thinking with virtue, it requires us. You ready? We must have grown up thinking. Grown up thinking. The Bible says it this way, as we consider grown up thinking, a fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterward. Grown up thinking. Just because we think something doesn't mean it needs to be said. We must control the, our thought processes and the, and the words that come out of our mouths as a result of what we are thinking. And uh, a fool uttereth all his mind. We don't need to say everything that we think. And then uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 11 says this, When I was a child, I spake as a child. Uh, I thought as a child. Uh, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. My fear is that many of us we don't have this grown-up thinking. We're still living like we're, uh, like we're teenagers. We're still living like we're, we're toddlers or babes. Not, to, not physically, but in Jesus Christ. I'm thankful. I'm, I'm 39 years old. I don't talk the same way I did when I was two years old. I don't act the same way I did when I was four years old. I, uh, the, I don't talk the same way that I, I did as a teenager because I've grown up. And if we're going to think with virtue, we've got to have a, some grown up thinking, controlling our tongue, controlling our mouth and uh, doing those things, putting away those childish things, those childish thoughts and, uh, and thinking about those things that are pure, honest, just, lovely uh, and of good report. Requires grown up thinking. Uh, several years ago, I think they had said that, um, you know, the adult, uh, the average adult now are, are growing up, you know, it's, they don't really become an adult until they're 35. You know, they're still living with, uh, with mom and dad and those kinds of things, and, uh, and, and uh, we need to grow up. Maybe you had it said to you as you were growing up, man, you just need to grow up. Hey, you need to start thinking. Or maybe you had this said, what in the world are you thinking? We need to have some grown up thinking. You know what I mean by that? It means mom, dad, it's time for us to grow up. It's time for us to be uh, the parents that we're supposed to be. And, and, it, and it requires us, hey, hey, when the doors are open at church, hey, we're going to be there. That's grown up thinking. We don't get distracted by the world. Hey, it means that we have enough character to, uh, to sit down and uh, read our Bible each and every day and meditate uh, on, on the, the word of the Lord. That's grown-up thinking. 
problem is, many of us, we haven't grown up. We haven't, like Peter tells us, but grow in grace in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We haven't done that. It's time to put away those childish things. It's time for us to grow up and realize the seriousness of uh, the life that we're living. Man, we are to be of sound mind, and it requires us to think like grown-ups. Secondly, we're also supposed to not just grown-up thinking, but we're supposed to have biblical thinking. Biblical thinking. In Hebrews, if you follow me over there, in Hebrews chapter number 4, Hebrews chapter 4 uh, and verse number 12, Hebrews 4 and verse 12, great uh, verse about the Bible. Uh, Hebrews 4 and verse 12 tells us, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Bible is a discerner of the thoughts and intense of the heart. We need to be filling our mind and our life with the Word of God. We must think biblically. Uh, I, I, I like uh, uh, the phrase that was uh, put out there years ago, what would Jesus do? WWJD. What would Jesus do? How would Jesus respond? What would Jesus say? Uh, what kind of attitude would Jesus have me to have in this situation? What would, what would Jesus' response be in this situation? That's biblical thinking. Instead of us just flying off of the handle and responding in, in anger, responding in, in hatred or unkindness. Rather, we must think biblically. And then the, the third type of thinking is we consider thinking with virtue. We've seen we must have grown up thinking. We must have biblical thinking. And then we must have godly thinking. Follow me over to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. We see uh, the thought processes of, uh, of God revealed here in Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55, look down at verse number 8. Isaiah 55 verse 8 says this, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We read these verses and we understand that God's thinking is not the same as our thinking. We look at our problems and we say, why God? When God's got a plan and a purpose for everything. God, uh, uh, his, his thinking is on a whole other level. Uh, we see it illustrated in scripture by, uh, by this phrase, by having an unexpected end. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen the next day. But God does. And therefore, his thoughts uh, are not our thoughts. Because we don't know what's going to happen, but God does. And he's got a plan and a purpose. I'll give you just a couple of examples. I, uh, we've been praying for uh, uh, Chase and Sarah Barnett. Sarah Barnett's having uh, uh, had surgery and uh, uh, had uh, some cancer there, and uh, they're, they're looking to remove that. Uh, and and they, they've removed the cancer. I think of my, uh, you know, why would that happen? Parents, a uh, mother of four. And we're praying for, for Chase and Sarah and the family. I think of my, uh, my nephew Micah, who's been uh, diagnosed with cancer once again. He's almost four years old, and for the better part of two and a half years, he's, he's had cancer. And we would look at it and say, why? But our thoughts, God's thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. They're higher. And he's got an expected end. He's got a plan and a purpose. And, and as we go through it, man, we don't realize what's going on all the time. We don't realize it. But we know the God who is in control. We know the God that can give us the strength to get through. We know the God that, uh, that will give us the peace that passeth all understanding. Why can I have a sound mind today? Hey, it's because uh, uh, we've established uh, this grown-up thinking. We're thinking biblically, and we understand uh, God's thinking is, is so much more and so much higher than our thinking. We must simply trust Him. 
Matthew chapter 6 tells us this in verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Take no thought for the morrow. No, we don't need to worry about tomorrow. We don't need to worry about uh, uh, this virus that's going on in our country, going around in our country today. Uh, we don't need to worry about it. That doesn't mean we, we, we aren't smart. We need to take care of ourselves. I understand that. But we don't need to worry. You know, I was talking with, with even my brother this week as, as his son, uh, uh, Micah, has that cancer. He says, you know what, we're just leaving it to the Lord. There's a comfort, there's a peace that only God can give during such difficult uh, times. We don't need to worry about tomorrow. We need to enjoy the blessings of today and live for the Lord today. That is uh, godly thinking. God's ways, his thoughts are higher than ours. So let's trust him. In Isaiah chapter 26 and verse number 3, the Bible tells us that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Keep your mind stayed on the Lord. Let's have this right thinking. Hey, let's think with virtue. Have grown up thinking. Have biblical thinking. Have godly Understand godly thinking. I want you to notice third this morning as we finish up. Yes, we must be wise into salvation. We must think with virtue and then we must have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. If you have your Bibles, turn over in, in your Bibles of Philippians chapter number two. Philippians chapter number two. In Philippians 2, we're familiar, and, and I'd like us to draw your attention to verse number 5. Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 5, the Bible tells us, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Well, what mind? What mind should be in us that was in Christ Jesus? Let's look up uh, at the, the, the verses coming before verse number 5. Look at verse number 1. It says, if there, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, here it is, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. As we consider the mind of Christ, having this mind of Christ, uh, we see here, beginning in verse number two, it tells us, fulfill ye my joy. If we're gonna have this mind of Christ, we must live to make others happy. The Apostle Paul is, is imploring the, uh, the churches at Philippi to say, hey, fulfill ye my joy. Hey, let's get on the same page. We might say it this way, be a blessing to others. Let this mind be in you. Fulfill ye my joy. Verse number two, once again, that ye be like minded, having the same love. Not only should we live to make others happy or be a blessing, but we should love one another. And we talked about this last week, having the spirit of love, uh, but let's get the focus on, on people meeting off of the people meeting our needs, and let's get our focus on meeting the others, meeting others' needs. Let's have this love uh, of one another. And then we continue in verse number two. It says, fulfill you my joy. They be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let's be united uh, in spirit uh, and mind. Hey, let's be united as a church, as a church family, uh, even during these difficult days. Let's be united in, in the goals that we set and, and in our mission uh, to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's remain united. Let's not allow our, 
our maybe our differences, uh, our little disagreements uh, uh, to, to shatter the spirit of unity for Jesus Christ. And God can use us to do a great work here at Calvary Baptist Church if we'll be but we remain united in spirit and in mind for the glory of God. Look with me down at verse number three. It says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. That speaks to, uh, to the idea of us avoiding selfishness. Let's not be, uh, let's look out for others and not be selfish in how we conduct ourselves. Uh, let, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Let's refrain from pride. Uh, let's not allow pride to creep into our lives, but rather let's encourage other people. Let's encourage other people. I, I thank you so much for all of the encouraging words as we've uh, gone to, to doing services online and as we've had uh, uh, devotion every day and uh, uh, since we've uh, uh, shut the doors of the church for the time being. Uh, and I thank you so much for those encouraging words. Uh, uh, that's such a blessing. It's almost like being in church, man, when, uh, when, a, when a pastor's up here preaching and, and somebody amens, man, that's an encouragement. When, when somebody says, praise the Lord, that's an encouragement to the pastor. Uh, and when you uh, give kind words about uh, our services here, that's an encouragement to me. And that's just one example. One example. Let's be an encouragement to others. And then I want you to notice verse number four. Well, the Bible tells us, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Be kind to others. Treat others how you want to be treated. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32 tells us, And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven <coughs> you. That's the mind of Christ. Uh, being a blessing to others, loving one another, being united in spirit of mind, avoiding selfishness, refraining from pride, encouraging others, and then being kind one to another. That is the mind of Christ. And then we see the example of the mind of Christ. Look down at verse number six. Verse number five, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Here it is. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Jesus is God. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. The gospel given right there. Verse number eight, being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Why did Jesus die? To be a blessing to mankind. Why did Jesus die? Because he loves mankind. Why did Jesus, uh, what went into Jesus dying? He humbled himself. He became obedient unto death and he was forgiving one another. It's all given right there. We're to have the mind of Christ. I can stand before you today and tell you we can have sound mind today if we'll have the mind of Christ. We can have sound mind today if we think with virtue. And we can have sound mind today if we are wise unto salvation. If you're watching this video and there's never been a time in your life where you've trusted Christ as your Savior. Trust Him today. Just uh, at your couch, in your living room, your dining room, wherever you might be watching this, maybe your bedroom. Just take a moment and pray. And ask Jesus to save you from your sin. And if you do so, I, I would ask you to be an encouragement to me and, and to those at Calvary Baptist Church. If you trust Christ as your Savior today, I would encourage you to comment in the section, in the comment section below, or, or give us a message uh, uh, through Facebook and let us know that you've trusted Christ as your Savior. We want to rejoice with you. Christian today, we can have sound mind. We can have that sound mind if we're growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If we're thinking uh, uh, with virtue, by having this grown-up thinking, by having biblical thinking, by having uh, understanding and having godly thinking, and then also having the mind of Christ as described here in Philippians chapter number 2. I pray that that's your desire. 
in the midst of all the, uh, the chaos and the, and the difficulty that's out there today, we don't have to fear today. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Let's show the world the sound mind that we can have in Jesus Christ. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together in your word. God, I pray that you bless the preaching of it. Continue to do a work in our hearts. And God, if there's one uh, who is watching this video that does not know you as your Savior, I pray that today they would come to trust you. And for the Christian today, help us to live in victory. Help us to be confident uh, in, in, in who you are. God, give us that sound mind that we can have. Bless us now. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for being a part of our service today and uh, looking forward to our next time together. Don't forget, uh, we'll have our, our daily devotions up uh, each day uh, on Facebook and then also on YouTube. Uh, and I want to encourage you uh, to be a part of those uh, daily uh, devotions and uh, looking forward to that. We're looking forward to the time we can gather together again. But until then, stay safe. Uh, stay strong in the Lord, uh, read his word, and be an encouragement uh, to others. Lord bless you. Uh, have a great uh, and blessed Sunday.